Aloha and welcome Aloha. to the latest edition of Telehealth in Hawaii. I'm your host, Vikram Acharya. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Cloudwell Health, an all virtual physician founded telemedicine organization based out of Hawaii. We have a very special guest today, Dr. Tony Tripkowski, also known as Dr. T, well known physician, entrepreneur, and founder of Neo Health based in Hawaii. Dr. T, how are you doing today? Good morning. Thank you, Vic, for inviting me on the show. Oh, I'm doing great. I thank just, you for uh, being on. Thank, thank you for being on. Tony, you are embedded in the world of healthcare in Hawaii, and you've been there for 20 years, long time. To get the yeah. ball rolling, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what brought you to the great state of Hawaii? Um, well, it kind of began with the uh, passion for helping people when I was. Uh, I, I guess a little kid, you know, uh, kind of um, led me to want to uh, go to medical school and become a, you know, a physician. Um, it's, I think when you think about becoming a doctor, it's more of a calling. And I think I believe in that strongly because there's so many other things we could have done with our lives. Um, majority of people who become providers or doctors, they, um, are intelligent and they're, you know, they're, they're hardworking and they could have gone in many different career choices, right? So why do they go into healthcare? Well, because the overall premise is you really want to help, you really want to care for people. So that kind of led to my direction in life. I was uh, born in the States. I was born in uh, Michigan. And then uh, we moved then to the Chicago area and I did my uh, primary education there where um, where I um, completed uh, high school in a year of, uh, uh, at university. And then I was offered this opportunity to uh, get into a program in my uh, country of my ancestry. My parents were from, uh, at that time it was Yugoslavia and they were in the most Southern region, the Balkan part of uh, Yugoslavia called Macedonia. And I had been given an opportunity through an organization to go back and we all had moved back by that time to Macedonia as a family. And I decided to uh, move forward and you know, go to medical school in Macedonia. And uh, it was quite an adventure because it's a different you know, type of uh, educational system that I was not familiar with. But uh, through a lot of perseverance and hard work, uh, I did very well. And uh, after completing my uh, medical education, I wanted to move forward and come back to the States. And uh, I did that. And I did uh, an internal medicine primary care uh, residency in uh, Dayton, Ohio. And then from Dayton, Ohio, after finishing that, I went on to opening and working in a group practice in Florida, in Venice, Florida, Sarasota area. And that was fine, but I came to Hawaii on vacation. And after coming to Hawaii on vacation, I said, okay, this is true paradise. Mm -hmm. This is where I'll fit in. <laughs> and so <laughs> I did everything in my, uh, anything in my means that I, I got, I got here and I started a, uh, working for Hawaii Pacific health in, uh, Lahui in, uh, had a practice in Kapa'a where I also did, uh, primary care and, um, uh, open day. And also, uh, I did a uh, hospitalist work as well. And then, you know, life takes different directions and one thing led to another and I, now I'm here in Oahu and I've been here for quite some time and I was continuing to work for Hawaii Pacific Health, but I always was um, an innovator and a type of uh, person that wanted to change things and make things always better. Mm -hmm. And so working for a larger organization made that difficult for me. And though I, um, was very fortunate to uh, come up with a concept for uh, the tourists in uh, Waikiki, Doctors of Waikiki, which I co-founded with uh, Dr. Alan Wu. And then in that um, gave me kind of uh, some success and then gave me a launch pad to really reach out further in a broader way to um, try to come up with uh, solutions for the healthcare industry. and. This led me to developing a new product called New Health. New, new Health Urgent Cares, uh, the concept is to be a health tech company 
and to really focus on the quality of care, access to care and costs. And so this is what you know, got me in this situation now that I'm working on really hard to develop a product that will focus on the main problems of healthcare. Mm. I think in general, it's cost because cost is, I think the reason we have difficulties with access to care. Um, I think quality care can be affected by that as well due to the fact that if you um, are worrying about, you have cost restraints, you're not gonna be able to hire enough staff and have you know, um, the ability to take care of these people. But from the aspect of also, you know, in general, people tend to need care. And now in the situation we, we're in, access has been the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. you know, and then access, again, I go back saying that it's related to cost. Yeah. But yeah, I'm happy to be in Hawaii. And Hawaii is where I want to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, starting this new project in Hawaii and helping the current uh, problems that I see in Hawaii with healthcare is my main focus. And then tried to develop, as I said earlier, a global product to kind of make a solution for healthcare across the world. You know, you made the transition from physician to physician entrepreneur. And what made you want to go into the uh, business aspects of, of Doctors of Waikiki, but also now New Health? Well, in order to grow as an individual, you need the ability to do things for yourself. You know, when you work for a large organization, there are restraints and there are things that you want to do that you just wouldn't be able to do them unless you're independent. So you have to make that transition to become a, a businessman in, medical, in the medical field if you are a progressive thinker. Otherwise, you're just going to get frustrated working for a larger corporation and you'll never get to fulfill your dreams. Now, New Health has very specific messaging around access, and you mentioned cost. Can you give us an example of um, the cost? You know, we know medical care is very expensive, but New is offering an alternative, and it's very cost effective. Can you walk us through an example of that? Sure. So, I've, since I've been dealing, uh, you know, in general, being a physician almost thirty years, I. Um, Notice some of the biggest problems are due to the way, the way we actually approach, uh, you know, how a patient needs to you know, get service, right? And it's either he has insurance or he has insurance through the state, like Medicaid, or he has to pay out of pocket. And most people uh, live paycheck to paycheck, and it's really difficult for them to all of a sudden have to pay uh, $150, $200, or $300 um, visit fee, right? If they don't have insurance, some people have insurance, but the insurance they have a lot of, uh, providers are uncomfortable with because of the low reimbursement rates. So I, I wanted to come up with a concept that I'd never turn any, anyone away. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm doing a membership based, um, healthcare company. Uh, if you have insurance and I take all insurances that are, um, possible in the state of Hawaii, uh, but if you don't have insurance, I have a $10 a month model. So you pay $10 a month that covers all your physician or provider um, services. If you have to have uh, certain procedures done, there's an a la carte menu, which is low cost. And, and because of this, I came up with a, a alternative way to get your medications by having them dispensed in office. And those are also low cost. The majority of the medications I offer are less than $5 from medications for your blood pressure, your diabetes, antibiotics. I want it to be affordable so that nobody can, you know, not get care that they need. Yeah. And, the, and, and again, I keep on focusing on costs and I'm trying to come up with different ways to monetize healthcare so that I can provide more services and even lower the cost further. Yeah. Now you also have, um, you also address the issue of access because you're open 24 7, 365, you have various pathways in which 
you know, physical locations that patients get, can get care at, at New Health as well, right? Right. Yeah. So telehealth is great, but telehealth is just not enough. Mm -hmm. So offering telehealth options is great due to the fact that it gives people access instantaneously. They get in the queue, they wait five minutes, they talk to a, one of my providers. But you need to have physical locations because everything can't be done online. And so at the physical locations, we provide urgent care services from laceration repair to the ability to draw your labs to physically, you know, assessing you and giving you a better assessment because we're able to actually put our hands on you. And telehealth is, um, is the future for access because it's very easy for people to get in front of a provider and get what they need done, uh, but just not enough. You have to have physical clinics to provide all these other services. Yeah. Now, um, when it comes to taking all payers, for example, um, you does that include both public payers, private payers, anyone that wants to? Yeah, because I know most of the most of the folks in the state of Hawaii have health insurance, like greater than ninety percent. So it's a value add, knowing that not only can they come to New Health, low cost care, high quality care, but also that they, that you take all the payers too. Yeah, because if you think about it, you know, most people, they try to find a good job and they'll find a job and they'll be working, but then all of a sudden some other opportunity arises and they have to switch employers, right? Well, then that puts them in a gap for a month or two before they start having insurance provided to them by their new employer, right? Yeah. So here I am at this point where I can help them fill in a gap so that they're not, uh, you know, not addressing their diabetes or not addressing their hypertension or if they don't feel good, you know. And that's what a lot of people do because they're so afraid to come in because they know that there's a high cost associated with, um, you know, healthcare. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the case and that's the truth. And then a lot of providers also, as I said earlier, to have a hard time dealing with these state um, funded uh, insurance plans, which are like Medicaid, because their reimbursement is so low. And that leads to a disparity because most of these areas are underserved and these underserved areas tend to have a, a Medicaid heavy yeah. and nobody really wants to build a clinic there or provide services there except state funded clinics or state supported clinics and that limits then access to care. Yeah. So it, it just, it's just interesting that again, as I said earlier, it all comes down to cost. Cost is like the deciding factor of why health care exists in the aspect of disparity due to the cost. Nobody really can uh, afford care out of pocket the way it is currently, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, you, it's very interesting having this conversation with you because not only are you seeing patients every day, mm. but you're also in a lot of meetings. I know that you're out um, building up the business for New Health, meeting with a lot of stakeholders in the community. What's a typical day for, for Dr. T? I mean, it's, it's, it's busy and it's frenetic, but it's, you're wearing different hats at the same time. What's it like? Well, from a patient care perspective, I've uh, limited most of my uh, office work from seeing patients at Doctors of Waikiki. So I, mm -hmm. I put in about 40 hours a week at Doctors of Waikiki. And then the rest of the day that I have the ability to do so is mostly me getting up in the morning, doing some meetings, going through my email. Um, trying to think of ways that we can grow and become a, you know, a bit larger and a more sustainable uh, healthcare solution for the community and the world. And but some days are not as busy as others, but it's usually I've got a lot of meetings. I like to uh, be very aggressive about a a patient acquisition and be able to do that. I have to find time to go into the community and do things that uh, gets my face in front of these um, either union leaders or, or other organizations to ex explain to them what I'm doing and uh, get, you know, the ability to acquire new patients. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does that conversation typically go? So if, if you meet with the representative of the union and you want to speak to the many benefits of new health, you know, for the members of the union, what's, what's the typical approach that you normally take? Well, like everyone knows that lives in Hawaii, Hawaii is very relationship based. Mm -hmm. So before I even can start to have any 
significant conversations. They're really kind of just feeling me out. In general, they want to see what kind of person I am. Am I who I say I am? Am I uh, going to provide you know this uh, trust that's very important here in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Am do I have the aloha spirit? And I do have the aloha spirit, and so that kind of starts the uh, opening uh, relationship building, and then. Then we build into, you know, what products, you know, what product do I have? What services am I providing? Why am I better, I believe, than the current healthcare uh, systems, what it's providing currently? And then, and then that's not enough. Then you have to show that. Then you have to actually have somebody physically see or physically use the services. And then when they do that, then you have a really good beginning. Then they understand where you, who you are. They understand what you're doing. And you develop this trust, you know, and, and that's very important here in Hawaii. Yeah. You also, as a way of uh, advancing New you Health, do a lot of community events. You know, and Correct. you're very involved, highly involved in delivering care to the medical community, not only in, the, in your organizations, but also in, in the community uh, outreach that you do. Can you walk us through some of the things that you do? There's a lot of good stuff that, that's underway. So one of the things we do is by providing services on the spot in certain locations. So yeah. for example, for uh, the Y on Nuanu, we uh, go once a month and we provide uh, healthcare services to the members and people in the community. And we do that in a um, really interesting way by you know, allowing them to get access to care um, all throughout the day. and and the, and it's really interesting at the Y because the Y is kind of a health centric member community as well. And they're really interested about their blood pressure and they're interested about their cholesterol and they're interested about all these things that um, I, I'd like to help them with. Um, then we actually then do outreach to uh, organizations that have a younger population that really foregoes healthcare because they're too busy and they mm -hmm. don't, they think it's difficult to get access to care. So we do this, uh, we started this with the uh, longshoremen. We have, we call it docks on the dock. So we actually go to the dock and set up a mini clinic and kind of give some, you know, um, heads up that we're going to be coming. And then we go there every, every second, every second, I'm going to get it wrong, every second Thursday. <laughs> and then uh, they know we're coming and they, you know, get, you know, they're, you know, contact, they get in contact with the provider and they get to see the provider, they get evaluated and they can get treated and taken care of, which is great. And then this kind of opens the door for them to uh, understand that it's important to get healthcare. Yeah. And I'd love to do, be able to do more outreach. I'm currently looking to get a, a mobile type clinic so that we can go to these other areas like underserved areas and throughout Hawaii to be able to, uh, again, do this outreach. This outreach is really interesting because it really does get people more uh, access to care and, and, and kind of opens their mind to, oh, wow, this is not that difficult. I can see a doctor, I can see a provider and get, you know, what I need, right? Instead of, I'm kind of not forcing them into it, but I'm kind of making it easy, easy as I can for them to get access to care. Yeah. As you're building up new health, you know, as, as any entrepreneur has, there are challenges. You know, what are some of the challenges that you're, that you're facing uh, building up the brand and building up the company? Well, brand building takes time. That's one of the challenges. It takes a long time to get your, first off, to get you on a search engine so that you pop up when people are looking for urgent care in their area. That's really difficult, but it takes time to get that done. Yeah. What also takes time is building a brand, understanding you know, what you actually are. When I started, people didn't know what New Health was. They thought maybe it was an insurance company. They thought it was, I had some people think because I have this Ala Moana location, they thought it was a health food store. They would come in, they wanted to get a smoothie. <laughs> so I had to really push that. We are urgent care. We're not an insurance company. We're not a, you know, we're not a smoothie shop. And those are some of the challenges. And then some of the challenges always comes down to funding. And to, to grow, you, you know, you need to make sure that you can uh, have the necessary funds to do so. You know, I'm trying to uh, do a very strong, quick growth. Uh, my goal is to, you know, build out and get at least six clinics here on the islands before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. 
and that costs money. And that's some of my concerns being um, the CEO and founder of the company. That's one of my major, major, um, major problems. <laughs> but it, <laughs> every, every time I've come up with a, a, a problem, every time problems come my way, I've come up with a solution. So, so far, so good. So it's kind of like um, it's destiny to keep on going in this direction. Yeah. Now you're, you know, your entire care team, your executive team, all works and lives in Hawaii, correct? It's a, correct. It's a homegrown except, company with homegrown yes. team. Yeah. Except one, I have a, I have a chief product officer who's in uh, Berlin, but everybody's here. Everybody's here in Hawaii. And he'll be coming, he'll be coming to Hawaii as well. Good. Are there any stories in particular, patient stories that around me you help that you sure. want? And you want to share them? Um, so, I I use these stories because it's uh, interesting to me, and it gives a good example of what's going on in our you know healthcare industry. So, I had a lady who had came came to see us, and she had a, a cast on her uh, on her forearm, mm -hmm. and uh, she had been wearing this cast for I'd say almost six months. And so she had insurance and she broke her, broke her arm and they put her in a cast and then she lost her job and then she lost her insurance and then she would go and usually, you know, you wear cast maybe two months. And so she went to get the cast off and everyone was trying to get, you know, $500 from her, $400 from her. She couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And so she just said, I'll just keep the cast on. So she wore the cast. Mm -hmm. And then when she saw that I was offering this $10 a month service she uh rushed in and you know we don't provide uh you know orthopedic services i don't even have like a cast saw but um i went and borrowed a cast saw from uh one of my orthopedic friends and uh, uh from uh, dr paul morton and uh i was able to we were able to help her and you know her hand you know needed to you know get you know better because it was in that cast for so long but i mean that's mm -hmm. That's, that's just one example. Then I had another example of this uh, gentleman from uh, Big Island. He uh, had an abscess on his uh, back and um, mm -hmm. he, was, uh, he, didn't have an, he didn't have insurance at that time. And so he signed up for $10 a month and uh, he was getting quotes of $500, $700 to address his abscess on Big Island. So he had some uh, miles saved, flew down to uh, Oahu, and we addressed his problem. And it was like, uh, after everything said and done, it cost him, I think, 60 some dollars with the antibiotics and the procedure and everything. Mm -hmm. you know? and, th and that's like the examples, people just foregoing their care because of cost, you know? Yeah. And, you know, here we are in a very affluent country and that should never be an issue, but it is even in, in the United States. I can't even imagine in other parts of the world. Right. And you have, you know, these are great stories and what's, Great to hear about New Health is that you have vision for growth and scaling beyond Hawaii, correct? I mean, you want to take this, yeah. Global. So what I'm, what I'm, I'm, we're creating a platform as we speak to do global outreach. Yeah. And the purpose of that is I want to be able to create a product that can be put anywhere in the world and be self-sustaining. And the way to do that is we have to monetize care a little bit differently here in the in the world in general it's kind of linear right the how we monetize healthcare uh, either the patient pays or insurance pays or the government pays right mm -hmm. so the best way to monetize is by using other examples right so i looked to google i looked to facebook i looked at you know credit karma i looked at all of these web based companies that actually monetize using the internet by different means, right? So why can't we apply that to healthcare? Right. So what I'm, and also, you know, the blockchain and crypto coin, all that can give us revenue stream, if it's done correctly, that gets the patient engaged in their health. And the, what they get is a high quality, lower cost product. Yeah. When I initially came up with this concept, I wanted to call it free care. Mm -hmm. And then I, I had a, a couple of my friends who are kind of like my mentors, they, um, they said, uh, no, nobody's going to give you money for free. You got to come up with a better concept. But that's the ultimate goal, to mm -hmm. provide a way to monetize care 
or monetize engagement of care and other things to uh, cover the cost so that it's either very low cost or none at all to provide service. How did the name uh, NIU come about? Well, I like, I like that it's only three letters, but yeah. what was really cool is that um, NIU means coconut in Hawaiian. And the coconut was very vital to the Pacific Islanders for them to spread out through all these islands that they're at, you know, from, you know, age, ages ago. And so they used the coconut, you know, to drink the coconut milk. They ate the coconut. They planted the coconuts where they went. Those turned into trees. The trees they used to make clothing, to make shelter and other things. So I wanted to be kind of like the coconut and provide this uh, care throughout the world. You know, that's, that's, what I re that's why I called it you. Yeah. And I like, cause it's like new, it's new. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a new way to provide healthcare. It's, it's a very uh, recognizable name. It's a very recognizable brand, you know, and you're doing just tremendous work in not only highlighting what new health is, but also the mission of it, providing low cost care, you know, and I know that I'm sure you get many patients that call in and many patients that visit you either virtually or in person. They're very thankful, you know, for yes. what you're doing. Yeah. Yes, they are. They are very thankful. That's, that's, that then you know that you're really onto something when mm -hmm. really people are very appreciative. I mean, I yesterday I went and bought dinner. I was on a break mm -hmm. and I ran into the server and I had my uh, new uh, badge on and mm -hmm. he, uh, he just couldn't stop talking how happy he was with the services he got in uh, Hawaii. Kai. You know, it, and, and I hear that a lot, you know, and people, uh, it really makes me happy that we're able to provide a service that people really recognize different and that we're kind of trying to help uh, eliminate any disparity in access to care. Yeah. You know, Dr. T, it's, um, it's a pleasure talking to you because not only are you taking care of people every day as a physician, but you're also advancing healthcare as a whole, you know, in the state of Hawaii with plans to grow globally through new health. And, you know, it's just very inspiring listening to you. And, you know, I, we all wish you all the best in your endeavors. And I can't, can't thank, thank you enough for being on the show. You know, it's always oh, a pleasure you. to talk to you, you know, outside you. of this as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, yes, we, we have more in store for the community. We have more in store for health. Yeah. Excellent. Mahalo, Dr. T. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.